Today's show is a two-parter. Part one, and they're both about you guys. Part one is a question. Where do you see yourself on the audiophile journey in 2033? In 10 years from now, where will you be? And part two of today's show is more of your systems, you know, another five or six or seven more audiophiliac viewer systems. But we'll go with, we'll start with this uh, prediction of where you're going. Now, some of you might be saying, I'm going to be in exactly the same place. I'm going to be in the same home. Uh, my system's going to be exactly the same. And I'm not changing because everything is exactly the way I want it right now. And if that's you, congratulations, you win the prize. Satisfied audiophiles. Yeah, I like that. But I have a feeling that most people out there in YouTube land are looking at their screen saying, no, I want, I want to change. I want it to get better. And then my follow-up question is <laughs> to you guys is what does better mean to you? What is better? Because you have to know, this is, a, this is a Herb Reichert observation, you have to know what you're looking for in order to find it. If you just say, I want something better, eh, you're just going to be stumbling around in the dark. You need to be more specific. In other words, if you say, well, I want a system that has much better bass. I want better bass definition, better bass impact. I want to feel the room shake. Okay, that's a clear-cut goal. If you say, no, you know, my speaker's imaging is a bit too soft and mushy for me. I want something really, I want razor-sharp imaging. Okay, that's achievable. If you say, uh, you know, I want to be more engaged in the music. I want to just feel it more. I want to be drawn into the music in a more deep, more penetrating way. Uh, sure, yes, we, we can figure that out too, right? So that's a start. And then the other thing is when you talk about these predictions over the long term, I'd say, well, you know, what is the means to get there? That is, are you going to be changing your speakers? Because speakers make a bigger change in the sound of a system than anything else. So, well, of course, changing your room. Yes, if you plan on, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here, if you think that you'll be moving in the next 10 years, if you see that as a likely possibility to a bigger space, or maybe you're cutting back and to a smaller space, that's going to be a part of this equation here of how you're going, how your system is going to evolve over this 10 year period, right? Yeah, big space, it opens up more possibilities you can have bigger speakers in a big space. You can play louder. You can get more bass. There's a lot of advantages to bigger rooms. The space is smaller and you're getting closer or maybe even in a midfield or near field listening possession, position where you're eliminating more of the room because you're getting closer to the source. That works, that works too. So yeah, if you, if you plan on moving, that's a whole other thing. And by the way, if you do plan on moving, <laughs> when you look for your next home or apartment, will you be making uh, acoustic considerations in picking which place to, to get, right? I, I've done that in the past. I haven't moved in a really long time, but in, the, in my younger days when I moved, I would walk around clapping my hands and listening to the room to see if this was going to be a problem room. And you know what? I actually picked by doing this, uh, I picked some, some good sounding rooms. I've been unusually lucky in that regard. And this place where I am now is definitely the best sounding room I've ever had. So that all worked out. But anyway, yes, yeah, so if you're gonna move, will acoustic considerations be part of the decision process? I know it's not always possible, but if it's something that's on your mind, you're more likely to avoid a mistake than, than not. So anyway, yeah. But back to the system itself. If your source, if your front end, if your DAC or turntable is eh, not so great, yeah, getting a better source will definitely improve the sound of your system. Because if it's not happening in the beginning with the turntable or DAC, it's not going to get better later on if the source is the problem or the weakest part of the, the, the link, the weakest link. Yeah, the weakest link in the system. So yeah, get a better source might be high on the list. Getting better electronics, preamp or power amp or an integrated amp. 
sure, depending on your speakers and how, let's say, revealing they are of different electronics. You know, when I was living with the, with the Klipsch Cornwalls, uh, they're very high sensitivity speakers, and when I was reviewing amplifiers, it was especially easy to hear differences in amplifiers because the subtle differences between amplifiers were easily heard over high sensitivity speakers. Now you can make the opposite case with low sensitivity speakers, that if you want to play them loud and have very dynamic uh, sound, you will need a lot of power to achieve that, right? And then those differences become significant. And as always, I can't help myself, <laughs> speaker placement in your existing space and of course in, the, in wherever, wherever you move is always going to be part of the equation, how far you can pull them out into the room, where along the wall, this wall or that wall. It's all part of the, I was going to say, fun. It's all part of the mix of how you craft and fine tune your sound. Because hopefully over your journey as an audiophile, whether you've been in for two years or 20 years or 40 years, hopefully you've learned a lot just by listening to so much audio over your life that you're getting, it's, it, it makes more sense to you how to get the results that you want. So yeah, let's just say experience counts. Now, <laughs> not everyone, I know, I know, I know, not everyone is so lucky to have learned from their mistakes and learned to avoid them. Yeah, I know, we, we make our mistakes and I've made I've made plenty of my own mistakes. I t told you guys years ago about in the 80s, I bought a, uh, a pair of Beverage 5 speakers. They were cylindrical electrostatic speakers. And I bought them because initially I loved them. And then, whatever it was, a few months later, I was falling out of love. And a few months after that, I absolutely hated those speakers and couldn't wait to get rid of them. So yeah, even the audiophiliac has made some real blunders in my life as an audiophile. That was definitely the worst one. Oh, I want to talk about one other angle of this future gazing question, and that is how loud do you listen? Now, this is subjective, very personal, right? But I could tell you that for me, I'm listening more quietly now than I did before. So in my own private listening time, meaning not reviewing time, I would say for, for me, loud would be 80, 82 dB peaks, rarely louder than that. And much of the time, considerably more quietly than that and late at night, even quieter. But I mean, when I review gear, sometimes I play it into the low 90 dB peaks just to see how it behaves when played loud. But anyway, yeah, I find I'm listening more quietly than before. And uh, as they used to say, and I'm enjoying it more. So. I'm not chasing volume or maximum impact, that sort of thing, in my own listening time when I'm not listening as a reviewer. So I wonder how you guys, I'd like to hear some feedback from you guys about how you've evolved as an audiophile, let's say from the previous 10 years to the present, how have you changed in your taste and what you want out of your system? You know? And then, of course, where you expect to be in 10 years where you see the trend line going. All right, so now we're going to do the Audiophiliac Viewer Systems segment of this episode, which will be, I don't know, five or six or seven different systems. First up is Larry. He lives in Mill Valley, California, but he was born and raised on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. His speakers are Tecton Electron, the integrated amp Prima Luna Prologue 2, is a Project Pre-Box S2 DAC preamp. Uh, phono preamp is a Lounge Audio LCR MK3. SACD player, Yamaha S1000. Turntable, Marantz TT15 with a clear audio Virtuoso Ebony cartridge. And last, but not least, is Larry's Logitech Touch Streamer that's used as a rune endpoint. Santiago sent in this gorgeous picture. He's from Argentina, but he's living in Canada now. His speakers are Spatial Audio M3 Turbo S Streamer, Blue Sound No 2 High, DAC, Cord, Cutest, and the Integrated Amp 
is a Kinky Studio EX M1 with upgraded staccato op amps. Now there's two subwoofers in the system and both of them are the same, HSU VTF 15Hs. One sub is tuned for mid bass, the other sub is tuned for low end extension. Then there's some room treatment in there, all DIY on the front wall, absorption panels in the corners and behind the listening position. Dejan is from Slovenia. His speakers are 1997 Wilson Cubs. Amplifier, Aeon Spark 3. Sub is a T0 from RAL. The turntable is an Avid Ingenium. I think I got that right. And the cartridge is an Audio-Technica OC9 3 moving coil. DIY streamer is based on a Raspberry device. Shemek lives in Northern Ireland. He likes Hitachi. Now, he has three amplifiers. One of them is an Hitachi, an HA610, but he also has a Pioneer SA7500 Mark I and a Yamaha CA610. The CD player is a Hitachi DA800. Turntable, Hitachi PS38 with an Ortofon 2M Blue cartridge. Tuner, Hitachi HD920. The equalizers, he, <clears throat> he has two equalizers, neither are Hitachi's. One is an Akai EAA7. Second equalizer is a Philips F3538. The speakers, these are vintage, Pioneer HPM40 Mark II. Brin System has some B&W speakers, uh, 804D4, B&W 700S3 HTM7, that's the center channel speaker. Surround speakers are B&W 702S2s. Subwoofer SVS 2000, height channels SVS prime elevation, now those aren't pictured. His AVR receiver is a Marantz SR8015. And for two channel, a Macintosh MC312. Stefan is a Dutchman living in Switzerland. He has an Accuphase E5000 integrated amp driving B&W 803D4 speakers. Digital front end is a Narender N100H feeding a hollow spring May KTE DAC. His record spinner is a Riga P8 with an Amphetta 2 cartridge and a Riga Aria phono stage. Simon's cat, Ziggy, is a three-year-old Maine Coon. Her favorite music is anything quiet so she can sleep. The speakers are Proac DB3s, RHEL T7X sub, Yamaha AS1200 amplifier, and then there's a vintage Technics 1210 turntable, Blue Sound Note streamer, and a Chord Mojo 2 DAC. Jim is from Long Island, New York. He has a VPI Classic 2 turntable with a JMW 10.5 inch tone arm and a Dynavector 20X2 uh, moving coil cartridge. The Phono Stage is an art audio vinyl reference designed and manufactured by K&K Audio. Line Stage, Rogue RP7 with new old stock tubes. Power amps are Conrad Johnson Premier 12 model blocks. And then he has a summer amp, keep cool, with an NAD M23. The digital end of the system features an Emotiva ERC3, uses a transport, the DAC is an Orlec Vega. The speakers are DIY three ways with a 12 inch woofer, 5 inch carbon composite mid range, and an aluminum magnesium dome tweeter. The subs are by GR Research. They're H frame dual 12s with rhythmic amplifiers. Matthew is finishing up this uh, parade of amazing audio with his DIY open baffle speakers that feature a Lysong 15 inch full range driver. There's also a RHEL sub and a Prima Luna Prolog 1 integrated amp. Hidden away in the cabinet, Denifreps Aries DAC. Ship Loki EQ, Blue Sound Note 2 i streamer, and a DIY Phono Tube preamp. 
Thanks so much, Matthew. And thanks to everybody who sent in pictures for the Audiophiliac Viewer Systems of the Day, which is an ongoing part of my uh, show here. All right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac, and I'm happy that you're here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy the channel, please consider contributing to my Patreon. The address is on the screen right now. You can join for a couple of bucks a month, up to 50 or even $100 a month. Details all on my page, on my Patreon page. And as I said, the address is on the screen right now. If you just like this episode, and I hope you do, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing if you have yet to do so. And with that, I can say my work here is 100% complete. Thank you again for watching. I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.